Many of you remember a young man called Valentine Strasser, who was president of, uh, you remember? President of where? Sierra Leone. You remember him? They had a president called Joseph Momo, who was a retired general. Now, Joseph Strasser became president at the age of 25. And they were fighting the rebels. And the story was that they just, a few of them, young boys, they just went to the president's presidential to ask for salaries. I was told he was a very good dancer and so on. They just wanted a bit of, you know, life. They got there, the president got fighting, left, they took over, and at the age of 25, he became president. Very interesting because I make the point that nobody knows what will trigger of what. On the 6th of April, 1994, this was when the famous shooting of the aircraft happened in Rwanda. The airplane carrying, you know, President Habriyamana and the President of Burundi, it sparked off the Rwandan genocide. February 27, 1933, it is alleged that actually Hitler had a hand in the burning of the Reichstag, which was the German parliament. But the burning of that building, when Hitler was, they were having a party in the house of Goebbels. And when Hitler was told that the Reichstag was on fire, the first thing he said was, it must be the communists. It marked the beginning of the killing of the communists, then the killing of the trade union, then finally the killing of the Jews. And that is why in German history, for the responsibility of the church, you remember the saying of um, one of our priests who said, when Hitler first came, he came for the communists, and I didn't speak up because I was not a communist. Then he came for the trade unionists, I didn't speak up because I was not a trade unionist. Then he came for the Catholics. I didn't speak up because I was not a Catholic. By the time Hitler came for me, after he came for the Jews, there was nobody left to speak for me. The question is, we cannot begin to deploy hatred. Because, you see, you notice that before every killing, before every killing, you have to so reduce the humanity of the order that it justifies whatever you have to do. It was easy for the people of Rwanda, for the Hutus to start killing the Tutsis, because already, the media had already characterized the Tutsis as cockroaches. That was the name they had for them. It is easy for us to deploy hatred across the country. If you ask the Yoruba, you know, there's a, there's a joke, and the joke has many versions. They said that there was an accident somewhere in the Womo show, and uh, they, they, they went, they, they made one Alabi. So Alabi, the police said, Alabi, did you see this accident? They said, yes. Was the accident fatal? Alabi said, what will be fatal, sir? He said, like, people die? He said, no, 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 people will not die. But only three Gambari die, but people will not die. <laughs> you can turn that story upside down, you know. But the point I'm making is that it is very easy for us as a country to get to that point. But again, so how should power be used for the betterment of our society? Again, you know, when Jesus says, and for us as Christians, it is important that we understand the meaning of Christianity. Because Christianity is not like any other religion. I'm not talking about superiority of, or even comparative religion. I'm not talking about superiority of religions. But Christianity isn't just like any other religion. Because it's a religion that triumphs in the, the worst thing that we can think about. Which kind of religion will celebrate death? Which kind of religion will ascribe to the kind of thing Jesus was talking about? When he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. If you are slapped on one cheek, turn the other. Pray for your enemies. Carry no money. Imagine, you know, when Jesus says to the apostles, he said, you are taking the gospel to all the ends of the earth. And then the next thing Jesus says to them, first of all, they have no idea where is the end of the earth. And I've often said to myself, if I were a follower of Jesus, I would have said, Oga, if you wanted this thing to go to the end of, you are going away now, you are telling us, which, where is the end of the earth? <laughs> but then, the next thing Jesus...
Jesus says to them is, because of, if you are going from here to Abekuta, what you need to carry is not the same as somebody going from here to Sokoto, especially if you are going on foot. Now, Jesus says, go to the end of the world. And while these people are preparing a business plan and how to mobilize resources, Jesus says to them, carry no money, carry no haversack. You know, these are the distortions, let me put it that way, in human terms and the contradictions of Christianity. And that is why when we speak about the power of weakness, I use two examples, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. I use the story of Mother, of, of Mother Teresa, who, as you know, lived in India, started her life as a nun. By the time she started her mission, she didn't have any pay. I mean, she didn't have the resources. But guess what? When she died, her, the funeral procession was five kilometers long. She's about the only woman, apart from her blessed mother, that even the Pope had to call, you know, refer to as mother. She didn't measure herself by the kind of things that she had. So by way of conclusion, let me, let me, let me just try and see if we can round up. By way of conclusion, what, by way of conclusion, what is the way forward? For us as Christians, you know, we now have to speak about leadership. This is the only country where people get into power purely by accident. And I can run the numbers for you. You know, we can, if you take it mathematically, there's nothing, I'm not inventing anything. I'm not denigrating anybody. President Buhari had said, I no want again. Okay, he said he didn't want to be president again. He was literally pulled out. He took over from President Jonathan. I believe President Jonathan was content with being deputy governor or, or governor. Obasanjo went and said, come. And then he took over, he was with Yaradua. Yaradua had already received an application to Amadou Bello University to go and teach chemistry. They asked him, no, come back and be president. All right, these are, these are verifiable facts. Yaradua took over from President Obasanjo. Obasanjo was in prison in Yola. They went and brought him and said, come and be president. Okay. You can go through from, you know, from the beginning to end. Now, Obasanjo took over from General Abdul Salam. General Abdul Salam's paper for retirement to be signed by Abacha were on the table of Abacha before Abacha died. Now, I'm not saying, you know, whether you go back to Shagari or you go back to the military or whatever, Shagari said, I want to be senator. He said, no, come and be president. The point is that we cannot do the same things and expect a different outcome. Leadership is a pretty serious business. And this is why, this is why when the minister talks about inventing a new tribe, it's a very important point. If you look at other countries in the world, the most educated president in the whole world is, do you know who he is? It's Mugabe. Mugabe has seven degrees that he worked for, 11 honorary degrees he had. Yeah. Yes, please, thank you. That's him there. You know, and I think you should, uh, where is, I want to, where is, uh, you see, these are, these, are, these are the age brackets of African, this is what we have in Africa, okay? These are the, these are the ages, this is what we have in Africa, all right? Uh, look at the generation, <laughs> now, so, when Nigerians talk about the fact that the, the age for, to be president has gone up to, is it 30? No, what we should be concerned about is the age, is to bring down the age and agree, you know, that somehow there is a correlation between the science of power. As you can see, Li Ping, for example, the, 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 the president of China, got a PhD in chemistry. Angela Merkel got a PhD in quantum physics, you know, quantum chemistry. Almost every, I'm, I'm saying these things don't happen by accident, but going forward, and by way of conclusion, what kind of manpower should we, should we be generating? This is the only country where we think if anything has gone wrong, it's because of our president. If anything has gone wrong, it's because of, but leadership doesn't work like that. The Chinese, for example, every year produce 4.7 million engineering students. Okay, what they call STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. India has produced about 2.6. 
United States of America, miserable 500 and something. But we have to begin to measure the kind of manpower that we must deploy into the system if our country is going to develop. You know, there was a, a madman who saw a parade going on because you ask yourself, what do people want to do with their lives? The madman saw the police, they were marching. Then he now started following them. So the police, the, the man who was commanding the police, he looked at him. The man was following them. He said, you want to join police? The madman looked at him and said, are they crazy? Let me end. Let me end. Let me end by... Let me end by... Finally, Nigerians, we have earned every, we've got every reason to be angry, but please let us remember, for the sake of this country, a lot of our citizens have given their lives to defend this country as soldiers. They have died and they are still dying. It is a reason why we must take very seriously the issue of building a new country together. That challenge is before all of us. And that is why our hearts may be broken, our bodies may be broken, we may be frustrated. But I leave you a very nice song. You know, Don Williams died this year. But one of the songs he sang, one of my favorite, I always sing the, 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 I always sing the response. He said, some broken hearts never mend. Some memories never end. Some tears will never dry. My love for you will never die. Our love for Nigeria will never die. We are, this is our country. This is God's gift for us. This is God's gift for us. Obama told the Americans, remember, Obama said to the Americans, yes, we can, but because we are Nigerians and we won't go anywhere, we will stay here, we will work, we'll redeem this country. Obama said to Americans, yes, we can. I said to Nigerians, yes, we must. No, 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 no. For, for us, for the Americans, Obama said, yes, we can. For us in Nigeria, yes, we must. Because Ahmed Cesar said, a man from Martinique, a scholar from Martinique, who actually claimed to be an Igbo man, but he said, in the rendezvous of victory, there is room for each and every one of us. Let us pray, because that day is nearer to us than we ever imagined. Thank you very much, and God bless you.